I consider myself patriotic because I support everything. I support like in school when we have like National Flag Day. I usually wear red, white, and blue makeup actually a lot and outfits, but I'm not really today. But I'm rocking the blue. Of course I, I see myself as patriotic. I always wear red, and blue, red white, and blue. Yeah, I got an American flag. These like it. I consider myself very patriotic. I'm um, from the state of Texas. Um, we don't play around. I am a patriot. I do love this country. I enjoy the country. Our surroundings and stuff is pretty good. It's just like being a part of your community and liking where you are in the world. I'm patriotic about two different um, places. It's America and Puerto Rico. What does it mean to be patriotic? To love your country. Believing in your country and what they do is right and I am patriotic. No, I don't think you have to agree with everything, but you have to kind of stand behind them and support what their decisions are. Patriotic with me would be like, get a job, get your life right, you know what I mean? Be a patriot to your country. Have faith in your own country. Have faith in your country. If, if your country calls for you, whether that be for whatever reason, uh, if we're attacked or whatever, you need to stand up for this country because it's given you everything you have. I think to be patriotic is to uh, love your country with all your heart and give anything for it. Support what we stand for because we're one of the few nations on earth that freedom and justice mean something to us. So Katie, would you say that you're patriotic at all? Absolutely. I love this country with all my heart. How about you? Do you think you're patriotic? Um. I would say that I think I am. I have, you know, a little flag on the back of my phone. I have flags in my bedroom. I have a little paperweight of the Capitol on my desk. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think I'm patriotic. Mm -hmm. Patriotism is often broadly described as love for one's country. While we may feel a certain attachment to the physical location of where we call home, it's much more than that. It's loyalty and affection towards the places, people, and ideas we're most familiar with. It's an act of celebrating all that unites us while taking a stand in the face of injustice. Patriotism is a willingness to serve our neighbors and to protect our shores. But as people of faith, is it possible to maintain a duty to our country when our first allegiance is to God? Can being patriotic be an act of faith? Faith and patriotism, that's what we'll be talking about today. Hi everyone, I'm Caitlin. And I'm Elias. And this, and this is, is Real Faith, faith TV. TV. The teens in the street all profess to being somewhat patriotic. We'll talk with them a little later in the show as well as meet our studio guests. But first, let's meet our spotlight guest, Mark, a former Real Faith TV host and volunteer firefighter. He'll share with us some of the things that are uniquely American to him. And why he considers himself a patriot. America, to me, is the 4th of July, is the barbecue, is walking half a mile to my elementary school where they would always do fireworks every 4th of July, the parades, the fanfare, all those types of things really symbolize what America is to me. To be patriotic, it means to show uh, support for your country uh, in any way you can, to support the soldiers, to support the actions of the country, and to have good values about what our country is doing. I do consider myself to be patriotic. Uh, I'm a member of this vo volunteer fire department here in Evesham Township, and uh, I consider that one of my actions that is a way for me to show my patriotism uh, as to helping on the home front. Between the activities we do with the Yellow Ribbon Club and welcoming home soldiers, and just general defense of our country here on the home front, fighting fires and helping people, uh, helps me be a patriot uh, by just being out there in the community as a, as a strong pillar of help and support. We fly the American flag on all, our, on all our apparatus, and we do that as a symbol of America and the country that we stand for. I guess the best way I could say I show my patriotism and my faith together is uh, by being a Knights of Columbus member. Uh, the Knights of Columbus does stand for tenets like uh, charity, unity, fraternity, and patriotism. And I'm currently going for my fourth degree, which is the patriotism uh, part of the Knights of Columbus de degree as it, it stands. Well, Mark definitely does sound like a real patriot, and mm -hmm. being a volunteer firefighter, I think, really helps him with that. Right. Well, let's see what our studio guests have to say on this topic. Okay, they are John, Anthony, Christina, Matt, Jenna, and Phil. So guys, how are you patriotic? What do you do out of love for your country? Well, I know whenever there's a drive for like to support the troops, send them toiletries and stuff like that, I always participate. And in addition, uh, in Ocean City, New Jersey, every 4th of July there's a parade and I'm a member of the 44th Street Marching Kazoo Band. Oh, wow. And we all, <laughs> we have red, white, and blue shirts and we all have our own kazoo and we march and we play all kinds of like patriotic songs. Everyone has a flag or a banner of some sort. It's a, it's a good time and it shows our support for the country. You know, one thing that I do um, out of love of my country is I think educate others. 
on what our country stands for and maybe what's going on for some of my friends who aren't um, media savvy or don't know what's going on in the government, as well as praying for our country as a whole. At uh, my high school, we have a program called Sweet Donations, which is we make boxes for the soldiers over in Iraq and we send them to them with candy and toothpaste and all the stuff that they need that they can't get over there. So we usually send like 45 boxes and we do it every like three months usually we have one. So it, it's just a great program. The only problem is we don't get enough stuff. So whatever we can send, we do send. It's, I love doing it, it's a lot of fun. That's great. Yeah, in my high school, well, in my religion classes, what they'll do is they'll give us cards and we'll fill them out and send them to the soldiers. Mm -hmm. um, but I like to add a little extra. I like to draw a picture, add a little, <laughs> someone a little nicer than what the conventional thing that they say like, hey, hey you're doing a good job. Right, mm -hmm. your own special touch. <laughs> um, for me, um, I know John, you study history. Um, I love the history of the United States and after studying, I think that's where my patriotism really shows is I studied other types of history and I clearly enjoy United States history the most. And you know, I, I love all the books that I read are historical books about the United States, about how the government functions. So I think that's how I show my patriotism is just by educating myself about what this country is, what this country was and how it's gonna get where it's going. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I love history, too, just the same, and um, I think I show my allegiance to America. You know, every day at school we say the Pledge of Allegiance, and I stand, and a lot of people don't say it, but I always do. Um, so that's really how I show it, and I just try to live my life as a faithful American, and I realize that we're so lucky to be living in this kind of a country. On a smaller scale than you guys said, I mean, I, I think I'm patriotic um, in the way that I support my husband. He's a Marine, and um, I help support him. Like, when he gets discouraged, I say, you know, you're doing the things you're doing for your country and just try to think of it on the bigger scale and what a great job you're doing for the country. So why do you love America? That's what we ask the teens on the street. Let's check it out. I love the United States because I live here. It's a beautiful place. It's where I live. It's uh, what I do. <laughs> uh, you just gotta, if I want to live here, I gotta like it, right? You should be proud to be an American. Because I think that there's people in the world that fought for our freedom, so we should do whatever we can to help them keep it. People fighting for us every day in war. The fact that we're the little guy, we started out this as the little guy against the rest of the world, and now we're the world power. It's the land of opportunity. It's free country. We're free to be whatever we want to be. Just because of the fact that we could be free. My, my parents said, uh, growing up in other countries, America has more opportunities, more freedoms, uh, more money, of course, and um, you have the choice to eat wherever you want. And I think that's a, that plays a big deal in um, why I like this country. It's the freedom of speech. You know, you can go out, not do whatever you want, but you can be pretty, you know, free compared to other countries and other societies. There's so much we can do here, like sit here and have an interview randomly on the boardwalk. <laughs> I could I could talk on this TV and not get killed for it. I, I'm allowed to do what I want as long as it's not harming anybody else or myself. I love the country and all the freedoms we have. <laughs> America's founding fathers believed in God. They recognized the moralizing role religion could have in a society. They wanted to safeguard every citizen's right to practice their religion, whatever that religion was. The Declaration of Independence and other published documents that form the foundation of our country define our rights as from God. The legacy of this foundation is still evidenced but debated on our currency, the Pledge of Allegiance, and in religious displays like the Ten Commandments on public property. Let's go back to Mark where he'll share with us what he loves most about America and how he feels that God should always have a place in civil society. I'd have to say one of the things that really makes me love the United States is the freedom that we have. Uh, a lot of other nations and countries don't have the freedom of speech that we do in America and it's one of the things that I think too, too often we take for granted. It's part of who I am and I feel that the freedom of speech gives us all the ability to voice our mind and our opinions and not to be afraid of what could happen because of what we say. I don't think you have to defend every action the country takes in order to be patriotic. I think you have to support the country as a whole and support what it's doing but you can disagree on things. It just means that you have your opinion. And again, that goes back to the freedom is that we can have an opinion that doesn't always agree with what our country is doing. I often feel that people uh, get confused about our country sometimes. They, they might take things for granted and say, well, I'm an American, I, I have these liberties, I, I have the freedom of speech, I can do what I want. But they don't often think of, well, what did they do to earn that? And a lot of times I think people need to be reminded that 
they need to be thankful for the gifts that they have of being free, first off, and having the freedoms they do, and also prayer even, because it's not too long that we've been fighting now for the whole keeping the Pledge of Allegiance and keeping in God we trust on our money. People often want to try to take God out of everything. They, they want to just form a secular world. And the problem with that is that our, our founding fathers didn't support that idea. They supported having a God and, and believed in one. And I feel that we shouldn't separate too far from that model because otherwise we're going to be an unreligious society. And I feel that faith and religion play a large part in who we are as people and the actions we do and how we treat others. I think that the Pledge of Allegiance is important, uh, especially the part One Nation Under God, because it definitely ties into what our founding fathers meant for our country, and it definitely ties into our country as a whole as being one nation under God, and that we need to be united. And I strongly agree that that should be something that is said in the Pledge of Allegiance. It should definitely remain in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, guys, we have two questions for you. First of all, do you think that God should have a place in the public square? And do the Founding Fathers intend for freedom of religion or freedom from religion? You know, I think going off of what Mark said, how he discussed how the Founding Fathers came and put God first. So I feel like it was designed to be in the public square, but then also our allegiance is to God first and then to our country. Yeah, and I think the Founding Fathers meant for it to be freedom for religion so that we could worship who we want to worship and believe what we want to believe. That's the beauty of America. It's a melting pot and we can, you know, practice our faith, our religion, whatever, in whatever manner we see fit. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with you about America being the melting pot, you know. Um, people from all over the world can come here and, um, you know, have whatever religion they want. And um, I definitely agree that it is a great, you know, idea for God to be in the public forum. You know, um, you turn on a TV and you see people talking about all sorts of crazy things. You know, you go on the internet, so what's the difference between that and being able to speak freely about God? I don't see why should that should be such a problem. Right. We talk about values, and values is a word that often both follows Catholic and American. And sometimes Catholic values are the same as American values. To be a good citizen and to be a good Catholic means following a life dedicated to higher principles and values. Sometimes they collide, and sometimes they collude. So which do you hold your highest allegiance? To your country or to your faith? That's what we ask the teens on the street. Let's check it out. Do you owe your highest allegiance to your faith or your country? Um, that would be my country. A faith, a faith is just your own belief is what you think about it. It, your country is what you have to live in. My country. Yeah, because they do everything they can to keep me safe and have a house. My country because they gave us everything. It's my faith. It's both. Both. Why? Why? Because I look to God for help and thank the people that served in wars. To your faith first, yeah, but then to your country because they allow you to practice any religion. So it kind of goes both hand in hand. The whole point of America, one of the big points was religious freedom. Do you consider yourself an American who is Christian or a Christian who is American? And why? An American who is Christian. Christian who is American. An American who is Catholic. Because I live in America and like on questionnaires and stuff like that, they ask your country first and then your religion. An American who is Catholic. Why be a Catholic who is American? Has your faith ever caused you to disagree with the policy or decision of your country? No. No. Pretty much no. No? Not yet, at least. Yes. Like, I don't think abortion should be legal, but there was, like, debates about that. It could, like, war and stuff, things like that could interfere. I think it's really interesting what they were saying um, about, you know, being a Christian who's American or an American who's, who's Catholic. And I kind of think that, like, it's, for right now, your time on Earth, it might mm -hmm. seem like you're primarily American before mm -hmm. you're Catholic, but then... You know, afterwards, and afterwards you're Catholic, you're, before then you're, Amer you're exactly. American, definitely. So I have a question for you guys now. Has your Catholic faith ever caused you to disagree with like a national policy or theory or anything? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Cool. Right. Mm -hmm. um, well, it has, I've disagreed about war or mm -hmm. any like fights because it's not the way to solve anything. It just makes everything worse. Right. I think that it kind of annoys me when people use their freedom of speech to talk about my religion and try and take God out of the Pledge of Allegiance. It kind of affects my freedom of speech and how I want to say God and I can say God that they want to take it out. So, 
Well, I think that um, a major conflict between the Catholic religion and national policy is like the girl in the birth they had said abortion. Right. Because the Catholic Church believes, you know, that's wrong, it's murder. Whereas national policy s says that it's the woman's choice. And like that's a topic that's very near and dear to my heart because I was adopted and I feel very strongly against abortion. Mm -hmm. And yet that's something that the country endorses. Right. Yeah, I mainly disagree with the death penalty because in my eyes, God is the only one who has the right to take someone's life. Mm -hmm. And for the country to put like that ability on themselves, I feel that's wrong because we really don't have the right to take someone's life despite whatever circumstances there are. Yeah, I agree. Those are some pretty big issues. And one thing that I did want to say is that, you know, our faith is definitely going to play a big role when it comes to the election. And, mm -hmm. and the way that we weigh our choices is definitely going to have a big, you know, our faith is definitely going to impact that. And going back to the teens on the street, you know, I'm a Catholic first, meaning that I'm a member of the Universal Church. An American singles me out into being in this country. For me, immigration, Jesus teaches us to welcome in the stranger. And, you know, by enforcing all these rules of not welcoming and shutting their country down to immigration, it's like, how much further can we go against Jesus' teachings? The pastoral constitution on the church in the modern world, a major document of the Second Vatican Council, states... Citizens must cultivate a generous and loyal spirit of patriotism, but without being narrow-minded. This means that they will always direct their attention to the good of the whole human family. United by the different ties which binds together races, peoples, and nations. Next, Mark talks to us about how his Catholic faith calls him to be patriotic. And how, through church teaching, he is able to discern ethical and unethical government policies. I feel that like my religion does call me to support my country and to be patriotic because it's that whole treat others as you want to be treated model. And I feel that if I'm treating others the way I would like to be treated, then I'm doing good by my religion and still supporting my country and my, uh, my fellow Americans. I'd have to say that I owe my highest allegiance to my faith because I was created by God before I was an American. My faith is a lot of who I am. I, I believe strongly in the Catholic values and I live my life very much that way. I'd have to say because of my faith I have uh, questioned the whole pro-choice uh, movement that is going on in America and the fact that many politicians stand for pro-choice instead of pro-life, which is something the Catholic Church teaches. And I strongly believe in pro-life over pro-choice, so that is one issue that I am strongly uh, in question with and, and that I often voice my opinion about. Well, right now we're in a wartime situation and uh, that whole issue with war is definitely going against the gospel in some aspects because taking of innocent lives and, and uh, that is something else that I would say I have a problem with as being a Catholic. Part of the, the issue right now with the war is that we're facing a problem where a lot of people are just trying to abandon the war and saying we just need to stop fighting right now. We need to support the people that are fighting on the front line to keep us free, and we need to still be patriotic to support them. And that doesn't necessarily mean agreeing with the war or saying that we need to continue fighting, but it means just being there for those people who are, are putting their lives on the line for us. Because when they sign up in the military or whatever branch of the army they go into, they're not saying that they uh, agree with the war necessarily. They're saying they want to fight for our country and do whatever it takes to, to keep us free. Things that might run counter to the gospel, including the war and the pro-life issue, there are just uh, unethical politics that occur often within the states and the, the overall government that can definitely cause someone to question how things are being done because if there's, if there's not an ethical leader, that doesn't go in line with the, with the teachings of the gospel either. You know, our founding fathers used Christian values and Christian ideals to found this country and I feel like now in society, in government and in corporate world, those values are being strayed away and it's almost a shame to bring up that you're a Christian. I completely agree. It's like now to mention religion or God in society, it's like it's taboo and politicians and corporate leaders, they want to try to stay away from it because they're afraid that like, you know, one misstep and the press and the media and the public is going to be on top of them. Like, you know, how could you say that? You know, what's interesting about like the whole foundation of the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, you know, the years prior to 76 was all the, not everybody who was make, writing the Constitution, writing the Declaration, if I'm right, I mean, John, you can back me up on this with the history part, but they're not, they weren't all the same religion. Like you had Jefferson who was, who was a more, deist. like, yeah, deist, and then the rest of them were primarily theists, but they kind of like differed a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you have so many ideas pouring into one, mm -hmm. but it, it says something that they all came out with the same result, you know right. what I mean? Ultimately, mm -hmm. they wanted faith to be very much involved in mm -hmm. our government. Mm -hmm. 
Well, during the Continental Congress of 1776, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, and Thomas Jefferson were appointed to develop a motto best representing the diverse population of the newly declared United States. They came up with E Pluribus Unum, or Out of Many, One. This motto can be found today on U.S. currency and the Great Seal. It reminds us of Paul's inspiring message in his first letter to the Corinthians. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. God unifies us as a people and as a nation, blessing us with liberty and enormous privilege. But what can Americans do to demonstrate their gratefulness for the blessings received? Our spotlight guest Mark gives some advice on how we can live out our love for God and our country. And how it's possible to be both a virtuous Catholic and a true patriot. I would definitely say to volunteer and get involved in organizations that support your country. Uh, find ways to help those such as soldiers and, and those that are defending our country. And just support uh, the decisions that are made in our country, if you agree with them of course. Uh, and if not, find a way to creatively and constructively speak out against them to try and influence change. From a young age, just seeing parades on TV and going to different activities in town and, and around the state. I'd always feel patriotic when I'd see the flag. I'd always say, well, you know, that flag really supports what I believe in and, and that really sums up who I am as a person. And it makes me proud to see that flag flown anywhere. I think it is possible to be a good Catholic and a patriot because being a good Catholic means you follow the morals of the Catholic Church and the Gospel and the teachings. And being a patriot means you support your country. I'd have to uh, say that we are a blessed country uh, in America here. We, we have a lot of liberties and a lot of freedoms. And I think that a lot of people might take that for granted and might not realize that it really is a blessing to be able to have that and to not have to be in fear of what your country's gonna do or if there's someone waiting to hear what you're gonna say if you're speaking out against the country. Prayer is a very important part of, uh, of being patriotic and of being supportive of the country because you can use prayer to conquer all things. Prayer can be used to uh, help end abortion. Prayer can be used to help take care of the soldiers that are fighting for us and to pray for their families and those that have been affected by the war. I strongly encourage people to pray for our country, for our troops, uh, it, it, prayer is one of those things that the more you do it and the more people that are doing it, the better it works. I know I, I pray for the aborted souls every night and I pray that uh, abortion will end. I'm proud to be an American because of the values that our country stands for, for the freedom I have, for the festivities like the 4th of July, Memorial Day, all the different activities that we do in our country. And I'm proud to be a Catholic because I believe in uh, what God did for us uh, to free us from sin. Uh, to lead us the right way in our lives and the gifts that He gives us through the Holy Spirit definitely help define who I am and help me to live my life. All right, so what advice do you guys have for young people who want to be openly patriotic but be loyal and faithful to God foremost? Something basic could be just simply wearing red, white, and blue. Like it's nothing big but it's showing that you're patriotic. Mm -hmm. Going back to what Mark was saying, I think prayer is really important as he was stressing. You know, pray for our leaders, pray for our nation. Pray to um, Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception, who's the patroness of America, for her protection for all of us here. And pray for the issues that are important to you, that our nation will go in the direction and follow God's teachings. Definitely, um, prayer, is, prayer is huge. Please pray for you know, our troops overseas and their families and their leaders over there too. I think you should just be proud in general. Just be proud, show that you're proud to be an American because that's one of the greatest things you can do is just show the troops, show everybody that you want to be an American, and you're proud to be an American. We can't forget to be first and foremost Catholic, and we have to do our best to live our Catholic faith through being an American. Exactly, exactly. The U.S. bishops have written, One of our greatest blessings in the United States is our right and responsibility to take part in civil life. Responsible citizenship is a virtue. Participation in the political process is a moral obligation. Faith enables you to be an inspiring patriot on the national scene, the state level, or even on the street where you live. Just as the novelist Henry James once said, I think patriotism is like charity. It begins at home. How is God calling you to be patriotic? We'd like to know. Contact us through our website. The address is www.realfaithtv.com Or you can call us at 609-406 7402. And we'll leave you today with the inspiring words of John F. Kennedy, our first Catholic president. Ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God, God bless. bless.